students i am anjali sharma welcome you all to your own youtube channel and in today's video we are going to discuss about electromagnetic spectrum but before starting the electromagnetic spectrum let us recall electromagnetic waves otherwise we have done this topic in our previous video the link will be provided to you in the description box and upon the i icon as well so without any delay let us just start with the electromagnetic waves so what are electromagnetic waves as per you electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves the name in itself is describing its meaning electro here is representing the electric field whereas magnetic is representing the magnetic field so if we talk about a three dimensional space if we talk about a three dimensional space then two fields one the electric field and the other one is the magnetic field both these fields are perpendicular to one another and both of these fields are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation means to the direction in which wave is propagating so the answer is quite clear what is an electromagnetic wave a wave in which there are two components the electric component and the magnetic component both the components are perpendicular to one another and also to the direction of propagation and we have so many we have so many electromagnetic waves and when we arrange those waves when we arrange those electromagnetic waves in such a way that they appear in increasing order of their wavelengths and decreasing order of their frequencies wavelength lambda and frequency f so when electromagnetic waves are arranged in order of their increasing wavelengths and decreasing frequencies such an arrangement is called as electromagnetic spectrum so what is electromagnetic spectrum electromagnetic spectrum is the arrangement electromagnetic spectrum is the arrangement arrangement of what arrangement of electromagnetic waves in what manner in increasing order of their wavelength and decreasing order of their frequencies so two terms that we are using here is the wavelength and the frequency let me make it very clear to you what is wavelength and frequency let us just consider a wave and a wave always consist of crests and troughs wave always consist of crests and troughs the distance between two adjacent crest or the distance between two adjacent troughs is known as its wavelength denoted by lambda now what is the frequency if we consider a point say x x is the point so number of waves passing through that given point in one second the total number of waves that are passing through this given point in one second is termed as its frequency what is wavelength the distance between two adjacent crests and troughs and what is frequency frequency is the total number of waves passing through a particular point in one second you all should remember that wavelength lambda is inversely proportional to the frequency f wavelength lambda is inversely proportional to the frequency f i mean if we have an electromagnetic wave with maximum wavelength then its frequency is going to be minimum this is the meaning of inverse relation now let me just tell you about various electromagnetic waves so electromagnetic spectrum consists of cosmic rays gamma rays x rays uv that is ultraviolet rays visible 
rays infrared ir infrared rays microwaves and radio in our electromagnetic spectrum the various kind of electromagnetic waves are cosmic rays gamma rays x rays cosmic rays gamma rays x rays uv visible ir uv that is ultraviolet then visible and then ir that is infrared and at last we have microwaves and radio waves all these waves are arranged in increasing order of their wavelength means the cosmic rays have lower wavelength than gamma rays gamma rays have lower wavelength than x rays and the similar pattern will follow until radio waves so they are all arranged in order of their increasing wavelength means radio waves have the maximum wavelength whereas cosmic rays have the minimum wavelength if they have increasing order of their wavelength that means we are following the pattern of decreasing frequencies which means that cosmic rays have maximum frequency whereas radio waves have minimum frequency so this arrangement of electromagnetic waves in order of increasing wavelength and decreasing frequency is termed as electromagnetic spectrum now elaborating further these visible rays are further divided as vibgyor that is violet indigo blue green yellow orange red red is the color with maximum wavelength and minimum frequency violet is the color with minimum wavelength and maximum frequency arrangement of these waves is the electromagnetic spectrum so at first you all should note it down and then we shall move ahead and will discuss various kind of spectra so students let us first discuss our emission spectra emission spectra is of two kinds continuous emission spectra and then we have line emission spectra at first we will be discussing about the continuous emission spectra in case of continuous emission spectra sunlight is passed through a slit sunlight is passed through a slit to get the fine beam of light then this white light the fine beam of light is being passed through the prism and then this white light is splitting into its seven component colors the phenomena in which white light a fine beam of white light which is when passed through a prism is getting converted or being splitted into seven component colors this phenomena is called as dispersion of light and the band of seven colors obtained is known as spectrum what kind of spectrum continuous emission spectrum now the question is why it is called as continuous emission spectrum it is called as continuous emission spectrum because all the colors are overlapped one over the other there is no gap in between since there is no gap all the colors are overlapped that's why it is called as continuous emission spectrum now our second kind of emission spectra is line emission spectra what is it and how it is obtained is the biggest question that would come into all of your mind so how is it obtained when it is noticed it is noticed when the vapors of some volatile substance now the question is what is a volatile substance a volatile substance is the one which is easily vaporized a substance that can be easily vaporized is known as a volatile substance and when vapors of such a substance are allowed to fall on the flame then a spectra is obtained which is known as the line emission spectra so here let us just take an example in our case let us take sodium sodium that is na 
are volatile substance when vapors of sodium are allowed to fall over the flame then two yellow colored lines are obtained then two yellow colored lines are obtained over a black background corresponding to the wavelength 589 nanometers and 589.6 nanometers means just imagine that you have a blank space and there are only two yellow lines so only lines are there so that's why it is called as line emission spectra very important aspect of line emission spectra is that line spectra of no two elements resemble with one another means if you are taking two different elements their line spectra is never going to match that is why it is called as the fingerprints of the elements like in our case in case of human beings our fingerprints never match with the fingerprints of other person in a very similar manner the line spectra of one element never matches with the line spectra of the other element that is why it is termed as the fingerprint of the elements and this point is very 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 important and could be asked in your examinations that why line emission spectra is so called that what is the reason behind of calling it the line emission spectra at first that the reason is when a volatile substance is allowed to fall on the flame then lines are obtained corresponding to some wavelengths in the form of spectrum other question that is important that why line emission spectra is referred to as fingerprints of the element so the answer is very clear that the line spectra of no two elements resemble with one another therefore it is an identity of an element it is an identity of an element and therefore it is called as the fingerprints of the element so now what you all should do is just pause the video and note down all the important points written over there and then we shall move ahead now we shall discuss the absorption spectra so what happens in case of absorption spectra that sunlight is passed through a slit in order to get the fine beam of light as we have done in case of the emission spectra the only difference here is that the fine beam of light is not directly being passed through the prism it is first passed through the vapors of a substance the sunlight after passing through the slit means after obtaining a fine beam of light is first passed through the vapors of a substance and then it is allowed to strike over the prism and then we will obtain the spectrum the spectra in such a case is obtained is that the dark lines are obtained in such a spectra dark lines are obtained in otherwise spectrum you can clearly see that there are dark lines there are dark lines there are black lines over the otherwise continuous spectra so dark lines are obtained in otherwise spectrum these dark lines indicate that rays corresponding to them were absorbed yes this is the point here when we have passed the sunlight through the vapors of a substance then the substance then the vapors of the substance have absorbed some wavelengths from the light the vapors of the substance have absorbed some sort of wavelength from the light and then this transmitted light was passed through the prism and what we get over the screen is the dark lines dark lines over the continuous spectra indicating that there has been some absorption taken place means the light corresponding to the black light has been absorbed by the substance through which the white light was 
fast. Since in this case absorption takes place, therefore the spectra in this case obtained is called as the absorption spectrum. So this is the difference between the emission spectrum and the absorption spectrum. In case of absorption spectrum, the white light is passed through slit in order to get the fine beam of light like we have done in the earlier case. But the fine beam of light in case of emission spectra was directly passed through the prism. But here in case of absorption spectra, it is being first passed through the vapors of the substance where some wavelength has been absorbed by the substance. And in this case, the spectrum obtained is called as the absorption spectrum. For your better understanding, I have collaborated all the three spectra that is the continuous spectra, the line spectra and the absorption spectra at the same place. Now you can easily observe that the dark lines appear exactly at the same position where the lines in the emission appear. You have to just look for it that in case of the continuous spectra, the colors are overlapping one over the other. There is no gap. That's why it is called as continuous spectra. In case of line spectra, you can clearly see that lines are being observed corresponding to particular wavelengths. Now, corresponding to these lines in case of absorption spectra, there are dark lines. So this is the case here. This is a very important point to note that the dark lines appear exactly at the same position where the lines in the emission appear. Very important and mark this thing into your notebooks quite well. And that was all for today's video. Now we will meet in our next video. So stay tuned with us. Thank you everyone for watching. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.